that's the start of the YouTube vlog, Danny. Hi guys, we've made it. We've just got here to uh, um, Holcomb Hall. Um, it's half Ironman weekend. Oh yeah, it's got a nice um, bike. Yeah, so. we yeah we've just got here. Look at all these all these car guys. I've dri I've driven us here in a zip car. Um, it took us nearly three hours, didn't it, Bruno? Bruno. Where are you? Look at Bruno. You've been such a good boy. Sorry about the quality of this, it's on my phone. Um, I can't really find my camera right now. But anyway, we're gonna go do athlete check-in, registration, etc. leave my bike at transition zone. We're actually gonna eat lunch first before we get out of the car. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do that and then we're gonna head over and do check-in. <laughs> Nice and early at 5 a.m. Guys, the weather's actually really nice now. Look at the blue sky. It's been pissing it down all day, hasn't blue it? Blue skies. Bruno's going absolutely crazy. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a haul because I ended up buying some stuff from Hoob. Um, but yeah, we're all checked in. Yeah, we set up transitions in the morning, guys, at like five in the morning. Uh, yeah, but we just grabbed a coffee. It's half past two, I think. Um, and we're just gonna let Bruno off the lead for a little bit and then we're gonna go um, back to the hotel. We're gonna go check in. Okay guys, we're actually at the hotel. We checked in, didn't we? Um, and we haven't found anywhere to watch the game for Danny, so it's just on in the room. Um, but it's, what time is it? Quarter past six? No, 10 past six, nearly quarter past six. Um, but I'm just laying everything out because I wanna get ready before we just chill and have dinner. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna talk you through like everything that I've laid out nutrition wise for tomorrow. Um, and yeah, I'm feeling quite prepared actually, right? I did, I forgot one thing and it's probably one of the most important things. Well, everything's quite important in triathlon. Like if you miss like one thing, like it's something really important because it's either something that you need to wear or like eat. Um, I actually forgot my bag for the bike for my nutrition. So luckily, I packed an extra race belt. So I've packed a race belt and I've also packed some nutrition to put in my tri suit when I get out of the water. So fingers crossed that that works. At the end of the day, it's not like a race race. So I can always like stop and get nutrition. Um, and it's not like, you know, I'm not under too much time pressure, but um, yeah, I'll talk you through it all and what I've got laid out here. Um, so starting off obviously with the swim here um, we've got the swim hat that they give you so this is your like your start wave so i'm in pink um, and then obviously my wetsuit my goggles and i've got a towel to dry myself with when i get out um i'm gonna be wearing the um sports bra underneath along with my 2xu tri suit so it's like this which i'll obviously show you all tomorrow as well when i'm doing the race um so yeah I've got that as well. So that is swim done. I'll obviously be wearing this all the way through. Then onto the bike, um, they give you these bottles which you're able to like get rid of and refill during the race. Um, so I've got two 750 milliliter bottles. I have got um, electrolyte and carb mix in there. Um, and I've actually gone for the new High Rocks My Protein range. Um, don't use my code because they've just got rid of me. So this is the, <laughs> it's not focusing. Is that camera gonna focus? There we go. It's the raspberry lemonade flavor. And obviously bike kit. We've got my helmet and glasses. My numbers are already um, taped on there. So there, there's one on the right hand side and one on the front. And then I've got my Oakleys there as well, which I'll put on, on the bike. Um, along with my shoes and my socks, which are rolled out, ready to literally slip in, slip on. Um, and yeah, so bike nutrition is all here in these two bags. I've got a race belt, which I'm going to have to wear because I've just forgotten my bike bag for nutrition, which is a shame, but no problem. Um, I can just slow down and grab food out of that. And then I've got some uh, Morton bars here, um, which will be going into my... Um, into my tri suit. They've got pockets on the side, so when I get out of the swim, I'll be putting those into my pockets. So I've got that as well. So that's kind of bike. And then onto the run, um, I will then go ahead and put this belt on, uh, which has got my number on and my name, because obviously you don't have any stickers on you when you're running. Um, and I've got three gels for the run, um, and I've got some little carb blocks in there as well if I need them, but they've got some good nutrition on the run course, so there's no problem there. It's just three loops of the course, so you know, you pass the nutrition quite a bit. 
I've got a hat which I'll probably put on uh, just to cover my sweaty head. Um, I'll obviously still be wearing my Oakleys and then also um, shoes wise I've gone for my Adidas Adi Zeros which are my carbon plated shoes which I bought for the London Marathon. And I've got some fresh socks there because my socks from the bike will probably be a bit mucky. Um, this is the chip which I'll wear all day. Uh, so obviously getting my time and things I need to wear that on my left ankle but yeah that is it guys all laid out I will put all that into my um, try bag here but I think I think I might be ready look at all this food that I brought with me because I was so scared that I'd have no food so in the morning I'm obviously going to have some porridge and stuff but I'm going to talk you through that in the morning when I obviously wake up because I'm going to be vlogging the whole day um, but yeah I'm so excited. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to get it done. We're gonna order some food now um, and get some dinner down us. I'm gonna carb load on pasta and garlic bread. We have just ordered a pretzel. By the way, it's 4.50 in the morning um, right now. Are you talking um, about how gorgeous the sunset is? Yeah, the sunset, sunrise. Oh yeah. <laughs> I hope the sunset isn't at 4.30 in the morning. Um, sorry guys, I'm just back driving after three years. Um, which one? Maybe the next exit. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> what was I talking about? Yeah, so, I don't feel nervous, but I was up every hour of the night. Yeah, I don't feel nervous, so I must be nervous, subconsciously. Um, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm just there to have fun. I know it's a hilly course, it's a windy course. The run's pretty much trail. Um, <laughs> so we're just gonna see how it goes. Um, and yeah, more than anything, just to get the distance in, but. Eek! I'm nervy. And Bruno's in the back asleep. But yeah, we'll update you as much as we can. I'm, Danny's gonna get videos on my phone, maybe on my camera, but it just depends how much he can see me because he's probably not gonna see me quite a bit um, because like the bike loop is like, of course, freaking massive and you can just go all the way around Holcomb where there's no transport or anything around here. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. We'll see you on the flip side.
Hello! Um, I just want to firstly apologise for the lack of camera content I got for that 70.3 vlog. I am so sorry. And guys, you're on an angle. Honestly, what kind of YouTuber is she? Anyway, um, yeah. First off, just want to apologise for the lack of content, but I have managed to get some phone content into the vlog, um, and yeah, and I kind of wanted to like give you a race rundown on the vlog anyway, and talk to you guys about it. Um, it's now just over a week later, uh, the 70.3 was last weekend, um, and yeah, wow, I, I cannot believe I still done a half Iron Man. I'm kind of like brushing it off, and I really shouldn't, but because I've got the full Ironman coming up, I'm just not thinking about anything else. And like, I've just achieved a half Ironman. Like some people, that is their A race, they're working towards half Ironmans. And that's, that's like amazing. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like I'm just brushing it under the carpet, brushing it off, I'm just like, yeah, it's just a half. No, you've done a half Ironman page. That hasn't sunk in yet and it's still been a week. <laughs> so I kind of need to get that into my head that I've done a half Ironman. What the frick? Um, <laughs> So yeah, I'm gonna give you a quick race debrief um, and then we're gonna get onto some Q&A questions because um, some very um, frequently asked questions have been asked. So um, yeah, let's do a race debrief. So yeah, we arrived at um, Holcomb where the 70.3 was. Um, obviously the day before, transition set up, um, etc. Uh, my wave time was half past six. So that means I start the race at half past six or at least my wave starts to go at half past six. Um, I was in pink wave. I think I said my rough guesstimation of finishing the swim was anywhere between 45 to 60 minutes, I think, something like that. Anyway, um, so yeah, my wave time is at half six. We actually didn't arrive to the venue, like to the place in the morning till about 20 to six. So I didn't give myself a long time, um, but I kind of like that because I kind of can just get there, get in my wetsuit, get ready to go without thinking too much about it. Anyway, I arrived at about 20 to six, had three nervous poos, got into my wetsuit, set up my transitions because you, you only set up your bike the day before, you didn't actually set up your transitions until the day of, the morning of. So you set up your transitions, get into your wetsuit, and get to your start line. Um, I was pink, I had a pink hat on, um, and then from half six, our wave started to go. I met a lovely friend actually in the pack, which like calmed my nerve because I was talking to her. She's like, yeah, it's my first time doing the half iron man. I was like, okay, cool. And I heard so many people say that by the way, like everyone there was like, not everyone, but most people there were like their first time doing a half iron man, which was really nice. And like, you had like both ends of the spectrum there. Like some people that like are just getting into triathlon like me. And then of course you have like people that are really, really good at it. Um, but there's just like everyone like, people from all kinds of, you know, triathlon backgrounds. Um, and I kind of love that because I didn't feel intimidated, which is what I was so scared of like turning up. Like I didn't have all the gear and I still got no idea. Um, so I was really scared to kind of turn up and be like, oh my God, what, what do I do here? What, where do we go now? Kind of thing. But like, it was, yeah, so organized. I didn't feel like a stranger to anything. It was like, I kind of felt, I don't know. I was just so scared that I was just a beginner, um, but it's fine. Loads of people there are beginners. Anyway, we go into the water in pairs and that's obviously when your time starts. Um, so I stepped into the water. We were told it was around 16 degrees, um, which isn't actually that cold for water in England unless you've you know, been swimming elsewhere outside the UK. Um, and I have only done one open water swim before and that was in the ocean in Nice when it was 27 degrees. So bearing in mind, I haven't been exposed to cold water before. I've never swam in open, proper open water before where I've had to do sighting. So I would recommend doing open water swimming before your 70.3. I would like from now until my full Ironman, I'm probably gonna be going at least once every other week, open water swimming, um, if not once a week, because it's just so, so important um, because the shock of the water got to me. So I got in, I just panicked, I had a full blown panic attack. I was breaststroking, I was trying to freestyle, like I was trying to get going with my front crawl. I just couldn't and like it really really panicked me and I was like right get to that first pool boy and if you're still like this page you're gonna have to DNF because you're you're 50 you're not even 50 meters in and you're panicking so bad how are you gonna do 1900 meters of this so yeah I was really panicking I nearly pulled out DNF was literally at the front of my mind like you need to tell someone to get you out 
So I get to the first pull by and I was like, you haven't come this far to get this far page. You have not. And then I was just like, right, just freaking get this swim done. And that's when I kind of saw the swim as a bit of a buy-in. Like you need to get the swim done to start the race. So because the bike and the run for me are like bread and butter. So like I, would, I just wanted to get the swim over and done with. I was like, you're safe. You can swim just freaking do it um and that is when the swim started to feel good um yeah so i've never swam in a lake before i didn't realize you wouldn't be able to see absolutely anything in the water the moss is so high near your face um i've got green bits hanging off my face and off my fingers which was very disgusting um but after about a thousand meters i was kind of enjoying it like it was kind of fun um so yeah like the swim i wouldn't say it's the best bit a lot of people that don't like swimming then do a triathlon like the swim was actually the best bit i'm like no it wasn't the best bit but it was definitely enjoyable in some sense it felt like a big swim because you're with so many people as well didn't have many feet to the face um but you do end up like going off site like going off not off course but like you end up drifting off if you're not you see your sightings not very well but overall I'm really happy with the swim and I did that in around 44 minutes um so a very steady pace for me I am expecting probably that pace for my full Ironman not probably not much quicker um so I think in my next half I will be able to pick up the pace in my swim anyway got out of the swim you do feel a little bit dizzy once you've done the swim into the transition but it was nothing major um and yeah just went straight to T1 gave myself a bit of time for T1 because it's my first triathlon, it's my first half Ironman, I don't want to rush this and set off without something, so I actually gave myself a bit of time because my first race is not about shaving off time anywhere, like I don't need to panic about that at the minute, like I can take as long as I want in those transitions. Um, my first transition was around five minutes, five or six minutes, um, which is fairly slow for a transition I think, um, but I had actually forgotten my bike nutrition bag, so I had to wear race belts on the bike. Um, so I had to get those on me in T1. I dried myself off with a towel um, and yeah, got the biking shoes on, got my helmet on, glasses. Uh, just I just triple double checked I had everything um, because I didn't want to set off on that bike ride and be like, shit, where is my, do you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, it wasn't ideal that I had to wear race belts and had no nutrition bag. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a pain, but yeah, so needs must because I wouldn't have had to be able to have any nutrition on me. So I managed to put a couple of bars into my tri suit and I also had a couple of race belts on with like gel cubes in, chews in, um, some molten solid bars and then I had my carb drink mixes in both bottles on the bike. Um, I had a call with my coach the night before and the aim was for on the bike to consume around 90 grams of carbs per hour. Um, I'd say I consumed probably about 70 grams of carbs per hour on the bike um, and that was just purely because nutrition was hard to get to which I knew it would be when I'd set off. I was trying to constantly like reach my race belt, reach for nutrition um, and it just wasn't ideal. So um, it was around 70 grams of carbs but I'm happy with that because that is still probably more than I usually have in training. Um, so yeah, no, I was really happy with that. Nutrition on the bike for me was precision fuel um, carb chews, Morton solid bars and Morton gels, um, and then my carb mix drinks. Um, so yeah, the bike was fun, um, very kind of rolling hills, a lot of headwind in Norfolk, a lot of wind coming towards us. Um, the roads were open for some parts, so I did end up in a little bit of traffic in some areas. Um, however, overall, really nice bike route, and I was really excited for that. So yeah, I completed the bike in around three hours and 12 minutes, I think, three hours, 11 minutes. I'm not too sure, three hours and something minutes. Um, so yeah, that was actually really, really enjoyable. Um, I just wish I had my nutrition and then that would have actually saved me time on the bike because I was slowing down every time I was having to get it out. Bearing in mind, I was reaching for something three times every hour to make sure I was keeping on top of my carbs. So I slowed down at least three times more an hour than what I'd wanted to, if that makes sense. So I probably could have picked up some speed on the bike. Um, but I actually really enjoyed it. And that was my main goal for the race anyway, was to just enjoy it. So yeah, bike was really good. Um, and then hopped off from the bike. My transition was much quicker because you literally just need to swap your shoes um, and take your helmet off. So yes, yeah, T2 was a little less time than T1. Um, and then straight into the run, got off the bike. I left my legs on the bike. I do not know where they were. I was shuffling i was shuffling um well it felt like i was anyway um i mean it was still probably a five minute kilometer split but it just felt like i was shuffling um 
Yeah, the first 5k of your run feels like dog crap. Like it feels so bad, um, but you've just got to get into it. You've got to push through that feeling because it will start to feel a little bit better. Um, so yeah, went into the run. Again, I spoke to my coach the night before. We'd agreed on aiming for around 450 pace split um and it just wasn't doable because there was three major hills in every lap and there was three laps that means like nine hills in total and it was just the elevation was just insane um so it just wasn't doable um i held i think it ended up being a 505 average pace over the full half marathon so i'm happy with that to say the conditions and i so if that was a flat half iron man i definitely could have picked up the pace um and yeah the run was really strong for me came second in age group overall um and yeah actually really 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 pushed myself in the run um didn't enjoy the run as much as I thought I would. I, I thought I'd enjoy the run the most, but I didn't. I enjoyed the bike the most. Um, but that's just because of the feeling in the legs, because you're already tired from working so hard through the swim and the bike that you're so fatigued in the run. Um, but yeah, three laps, did three laps, and then um, couldn't stomach anything on the run. Had aimed to have a couple of gels at least during the half marathon, but not one gel was consumed because I it was going to come out of one end. Something hasn't agreed with my stomach that was that I took on the bike and I kind of need to work what that it work out what that is before my full Ironman because that is not going to be good that is not going to be good it was going to come out of one end at 15 to 17 kilometers I was either going to vom or I was going to shit myself and I didn't know which one it was going to be I just burped so much for those last like four kilometers um but yeah when you're on that third and final lap and you know you're going to that carpet it just feels so good that's when like you start to get a bit overwhelmed um and yeah, straight down the carpet into the finish line, finishing in five hours and 54 minutes, which I will take a sub six for my first half Ironman. I will take that every day, but I know where I can shave time off now. I know my transitions can be quicker. I know I could definitely pick up speed on the bike if it was a ro uh, closed road and also if I had my nutrition bag. Um, and if I had a run that wasn't hilly, I could definitely pick up some time. My swim, I, I'm going to be way more confident in open water. So I'm really hoping to shave some time off for my next half Ironman. I was actually going to say get faster for my full Ironman, but that's not going to happen because it's double the distance. So God knows if I could ever speed up doing double the distance. Um, but yeah, overall, a really good race. Really, really good race. Had so much fun. Um, and yeah, it was so great. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, but I thought I'd also answer a couple of frequently asked questions um, since I've done the race. Um, so yeah, let me read some out for you. Right, I've got them written down in my notes. Okay, so number one was, where did you go to the toilet? Um, so I actually only used the toilet once on the race. Um, and that was during the bike. There was a bike stop halfway on the bike bike course there was just one stop halfway where you could refill your bottles get some food go to the toilet um there was a queue for the cubicle so what i did was i just got off the bike i stood behind the cubicles because there was queues um i just stood there and i just pissed myself and i just got straight back on the bike i didn't pull my tricep down or anything because i thought do you know what i'm gonna dry off on the bike i've already been wet from the swim um i i just couldn't wee whilst riding I need to learn to do that. Um, so I just needed to get off the bike just to concentrate, let the wee out my bladder and then get back on the bike. So that's just what I did. Um, so yeah, I weed myself uh, during the bike. Um, I think that's normal in triathlon, no? Is that not normal? I don't know, someone told me to do that. Anyway, moving on. Um, nutrition, what, what did you do for nutrition during the race? Um, so yeah, I've kind of discussed this in just my previous run through um but yeah swim wise i just made sure i was fueled in the morning before going into the swim had my bagels porridge um and then yeah just my bike nutrition like i said i took the gel chews the gels and also the morton solid bars and then i had my carb drink mixes um and then my aim was to take gels also in the run but I didn't manage to do that we were aiming for 90 grams of carbs an hour on the bike um and the run i was aiming for at least two gels on the run but that didn't happen um so yeah i know what to take 
into my full Ironman and I know that I do need to trial my bike nutrition a little bit more during training because something didn't quite agree with me and I had a major stitch. So I'm gonna work that out. Um, to so I think I just need to get my body used to taking on a lot of carbs during a small amount of time. Um, so I will do that throughout training and I will just start to increase the carbs during training as well and um, just make sure I'm getting the fuel on board. Um, but yeah. Nutrition wise, I actually feel like it went okay. Like it didn't actually go too bad overall. I was really expecting um, to like me to just like bonk on the on the bike and like just completely run out of energy. But I I continued to fuel, which is good and was my aim. Okay, the next question is what tri suit and wetsuit did you wear? Um, so wetsuit, I wore a zone three wetsuit. Um, I think I will get another one before my full Ironman, just because I've put a few holes in it already. And also I do want a different brand for no other reason. Um, I just want to try out another brand um, for buoyancy and also um, for quality as well. I just feel like the zone three is good, good quality if you're wanting it for like beginner triathlons etc like I didn't buy a high-end zone 3 wetsuit I actually bought like a cheap zone 3 wetsuit um so and it's done the job it's done it's done the job um and also it's got a bit of pink on it which is kind of cute um but yeah I know I'm gonna try a different brand for my wetsuit next um and for my tri suit I wore a 2xu tri suit I bought it four days before the race because I realized I didn't have one um because I've been wearing like I've been wearing a tri suit in training, um, which is actually 2XU as well, um, but I just didn't want to wear that one because it, it's worn now. Um, like it's quite worn in and like the, the padding in the um, in the bum of it is not the best quality. Um, so yeah, no, I bought a new 2XU one and it was perfect to be fair. Yeah, it was nice, um, fits well, has a couple of pockets in um, and yeah, I would actually recommend it to a friend. Um, I bought it a few days before the triathlon. I did one bike session in it before the race um, just to make sure it doesn't chafe or anything like that or rub or is too tight anywhere. Um, so yeah, I would recommend wearing it out a little bit before your um, before your race and just making sure it fits well, doing at least one one or two sessions in it. Um, but yeah, it was actually a really good try suit. Would definitely recommend. Wore it underneath my wetsuit before the swim. Um, and then obviously when I took the wetsuit off, I had my tri suit on and they're like fast drying. And also you're on the bike, so it dries super quick. Um, but yeah, I would definitely recommend 2XU for a lot of triathlon gear to be fair. Um, yeah, they've got some good triathlon gear going on. Um, so definitely check them out. Okay, and last but not least, I'm gonna answer the la one more question because I feel like I've kind of answered all the questions you guys have asked in my race debrief. Um, but someone's asked me what the best part of the race was. Um, and I mean, apart from running down the finish line to like finish it off, I think, I think the, like the best part of the race, not as in like the which sport, which, which part you know what I mean like the swim the bike the run but I think the best part of the race was actually completing the swim like running out of the swim I have never felt so achieved before because like what seven months ago I could not swim I could breaststroke okay that's all I could do I could breaststroke for a couple of hundred meters I could not swim one length of the swimming pool without in fact I couldn't I was gonna say without being out of breath. No, I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. I didn't know, I felt my arms looked funny. I could not keep my legs up. I couldn't breathe I was just, all the time. So getting out of the swimming was the best part of the race for me. The achievement, I just knew the race had started once I got out. Yeah, if I could just get that feeling and put it in a bottle and keep it forever, um, just, yeah, it was such a good part of the race. So great. And then also running down the finish line, that was even better. Running down that carpet feels great. I was literally like, yeah, yeah, done it. Um, anyway, yes, that's my 70.3 race debrief. But if you guys have any more questions, do comment below um, or check me out on Instagram, drop me a DM or whatever, any questions that you'd want to know about. But yeah, Outlaw was great. Um, that's the half Iron Man that I did. I call it half Iron Man because it's, if I called it a half Outlaw, no one knew, would know what it is. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, it was a 70.3. 
but yeah great overall um and i hope you guys enjoyed that debrief and the little video that i made out of all the clips that i kind of got on my phone um but yeah thank you guys for watching i'm going to be coming back with some more iron man training content i know i've lacked in that recently um so i'm going to be showing you guys i'm going to show you guys some more days of training and also how i'm ramping up the training now from a 70.3 to a full um because the mileage is going up the training's going up tiredness is going up the fatigue's going up um so yeah i'm gonna show you guys some more of that on here in long form content but anyway hope you guys have enjoyed watching um hit that like button if you haven't already hit that subscribe button if you haven't already check me out on instagram page dana underscore and i will see you guys in the next vlog mwah, mwah, love ya